All right, these are the lesson notes for today, and we're going to start off with a warm-up on a quadrilateral here. So we have a quadrilateral, A, B, C, D, and it says it's a rectangle. So A, B, C, D is a rectangle. Now it's saying, it's telling us here that A, E, this little segment here, that this is equal to 36. And then it's also giving us information that the segment EC, or CE, I should say, that that segment is 2x minus 4. Well, what do you guys remember about the diagonals of a rectangle? Well, yeah, the, the, they, they bisect each other. So we have AE congruent to angle, or to segment CE, because these diagonals, they bisect each other. They create congruent pieces of our diagonal. We do that again. So these are congruent sides right here. Those little tick marks represent that. What does that sound like a strategy? Well, yeah. So now we substitute in what we know AE is. Well, AE is 36, and that congruence becomes equal. And CE is 2x minus 4. So now they want us to find x. They want us to solve for x. So let's do that. Let's solve this. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And so I get 40 is equal to 2x. Well, to solve this, I have to divide by 2. So my answer is x equals 20. That is the warm-up. So let's look at the definition of a rhombus here. Well, it says here that a rhombus is a parallelogram with all four sides that are congruent. Well, how do we convey, how do we communicate when four sides are congruent? Well, we use tick marks on the side. That's how we show that all four sides are congruent. And we can also write a congruent statement. So all four sides are congruent, and we can look at these sides and their endpoint vertices and write a congruent statement. We can say that segment EF is congruent to segment ED. And ED is also congruent to DG. And segment DG is also congruent to segment FG. So we have four sides that are each congruent to one another. The next property that we want to talk about is that each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. Now remember in a parallelogram, we have opposite angles that are congruent. Okay? That's right here in our statement opposite angles that are congruent. So when we have a diagonal across connecting these non-consecutive vertices, remember a diagonal, the definition is a line segment that, by, that, that, that connects two non-consecutive vertices. Okay, so when I do that, in a rhombus, they bisect those opposite congruent angles. So what happens here is this angle is congruent to that angle. And this angle is congruent to this angle. So we, what we've done is we've created four congruent angles because that diagonal bisects the opposite angles and one of the properties of a parallelogram is that we have opposite angles that are congruent so each of these properties of parallelograms opposite sides parallel opposite sides congruent opposite angles congruent consecutive angles supplementary remember that's when they add up to 180 degrees and that the diagonals bisect each other all these properties of parallelograms apply to the rhombus. 
Next one. But when we talk about these diagonals even more, even further, we can start talking about the fact that they create two perpendicular lines. So when, we, when I draw these diagonals that are between two non-consecutive vertices, well, these diagonals are two perpendicular lines. And what do you know about perpendicular lines? Well, perpendicular lines, they form, they form four right angles, okay? So how do we show a right angle? Well, we put a little box in the corner. And what does an, a right angle measure? Well, it measures 90 degrees. So what happens when I pull this apart? We'll pull this little part. What, what does, what's formed here? Well, what is formed is we have four right triangles. So if, what do you guys remember about right triangles? When we have legs A and B and the hypotenuse C, you guys remember your strategy? To use on a right triangle? Well, the Pythagorean theorem. We know that A squared, when we square both legs and we add them together, we know that they equal C squared, the hypotenuse squared. So that's what we're going to start using again because these diagonals in a rhombi, they are perpendicular to each other and they create, they split the rhombus into four right triangles. All right. So we have tests that we can do with the rhombus. We can make a test and determine whether we have a parallelogram, whether that parallelogram is a rhombus or not. The first test is if the diagonals of that parallelogram are perpendicular to that I just described. If we have perpendicular diagonals, then the parallelogram's a rhombus. The next one is if the next test for a rhombi is if one diagonal of the parallelogram bisects a pair of opposite angles. Remember, a parallelogram has opposite angles that are congruent. If that happens, then the parallelogram is also a rhombus. Last one, if one pair of consecutive sides of the parallelogram are congruent, meaning that we have consecutive sides like the next one, consecutive, not across, but consecutive next to it, all we need is one pair of consecutive sides, then that shows that the parallelogram has to be a rhombus. All right, let's be clear again. A rhombus, all the properties of parallelograms apply to the rhombuses. So opposite sides parallel, opposite sides congruent, opposite angles congruent, consecutive angles that are add up to 180, and diagonals bisecting each other. All right, let's do some of these problems. Let's do some of these examples. So we have a rhombus here. Rhombus A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, D. All right, that's, a, that's telling us it's a rhombus. And they're giving us what that angle measure is. B, A, C, well, B, A, C is right there, that's, that's, that's my 32 degrees. That angle measures 32 degrees. Now, they want us to find the measure of each angle. Well, first, these diagonals that are drawn between non-consecutive vertices, these are perpendicular lines. And perpendicular lines form four right angles. And right angles measure 90 degrees. So I know that the measure of angle four, which they're asking for us right at the bottom here, they're asking for what, us what is the measure of angle four. Well, I know that's a perpendicular, that those diagonals are perpendicular, and so that angle four, that angle measure is 90 degrees, okay? Let's go to the top now. Well, it's asking what is the measure of angle one right here? Well, angle one is part 
of this triangle right here. And this triangle is a right triangle. So our strategy either it can be triangle sum theorem where all the angles add up to 180, or it can be the, uh, the right triangle complements theorem where in a 90 degree in a right triangle, the other two angles have to add up to 180. I'm sorry, not 180, 90 degrees. They have to be complementary. So your choice. So we know that the measure of angle A there is 32 degrees. So we know that 32 plus the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle four, which is 90 degrees, we know that that is equal to 180. That is our triangle sum theorem. So add this up, 32 plus 90 is 122. So the measure of angle one plus 122 equals 180. So if I subtract 122 from both sides, we get our answer here. And our answer is, is that the measure of angle one is 58 degrees. So that is what the measure of angle 1 is. So now I want to ask, what is the measure of angle 2? Well, measure angle 2 is right next to the measure angle 1. And this segment here, BD, is one of our diagonals. And that diagonal in a rhombus bisects those opposite congruent angles that is one of the parallelogram properties we talked about. Well, if this diagonal BD bisects this angle, we already know one of the angle measures is 58. One of the angle measures is 58. Well, this other angle has to be congruent to it if this is an angle bisector. And so this angle measure is also 58 degrees. Okay, let's go to the next one. So it's asking, what, asking us to find what is the measure of angle 3. Well, angle 3 is down here. Angle 3 is across from this angle bisector, AC, AC. Well, that is another one of our diagonals, and it's already split this angle over here into 32 degrees, so the measure of angle 3 is also being bisected, so its angle measure is also 32 degrees. All right, that is the first page. All right, page two. The diagonals of rhombus F, G, H, J intersect at point K. Let's use the given information to find the measure or value of each of these. So first one we have, we have the measure of angle F, J, H. So F, J, H is down here. And this angle measure is 82 degrees. This is 82 degrees. And it's, one, it's, it's asking us to find the measure of angle K, H, J. K, H, J. So K, H, J is this angle measure right here. Right here. All right, so what do we have here? Well, we know we have a 90 degree angle here. And we know that this is this diagonal from G to J, that that's an angle bisector. And so we split this 82 degree angle into half. So half of 82 is going to be 41 degrees. So we have this little angle in the corner that is part of our triangle we're trying to find. This is 41 degrees. So we have 41 plus a 90 degree angle plus the angle the measure of angle K, H, J, that's going to equal to 180. So 90 plus 41 plus the measure of angle K, H, J equals 180. This is triangle sum theorem. So adding 90 plus 41, that is 131. And so to find the measure of angle K, H, J, we got to subtract 131. Subtract 131. And so when I do that, I get 49 degrees. So my measure of angle K, H, J equals 49 degrees. Next one. 
Well, it says here if, if GH is congruent to JH, because we have a rhombus, and all the sides in a rhombus are congruent, that we can show by a tick mark. Well, if GH is X plus 9, and JH is F is 5X minus 2, and we have four sides of a, con of a rhombus are congruent, that sounds like a strategy. So GH is congruent to JH because all four sides of Enramas are congruent to each other. So let's plug in, substitute in what we know. X plus 9 equals 5X minus 2. Solve for X. Find the solution for X. So we're going to add 2 to both sides. Add 2 to both sides. I get 11. X plus 11 equals 5X. Subtract X from both sides. I get 11 equals 4X. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. And I get X equals like 2 and 3 fourths or 2.75. That's my answer. Right, let's look at the next one. It's stating here that quadrilateral A, B, C, D is a rhombus. It's asking us to find each value or measure. Well, here it's telling us the measure of angle A, B, D. A, B, D right there. That angle measure is 60 degrees. Okay? This angle measure right here. It's asking us to find measure of B DC. Well, if you see, this is the opposite angle in a parallelogram. And opposite angles are congruent. And if this is a rhombus, then this diagonal here, BD, is bisecting those congruent opposite angles. And so what happens is that this is 60 degrees well, this side over here is 60 degrees. And this side across over here is 60 degrees. And our angle measure, angle B, DC, is also 60 degrees. So the measure of angle B, DC, equals 60 degrees. Number five, if AE... It's 3x minus 1. AE is right here, this little segment. And AC is 16. AC is the whole. And that is 16. The whole is 16. And the part is 3x minus 1. Well, what's our strategy here? Well, remember, we've talked about this strategy part plus part equals whole. All right? So this part right here, because this is a diagonal in a parallelogram, these diagonals bisect each other. So this part is congruent to this part. So if this is 3x minus 1, this part is 3x minus 1. So part plus part equals whole is going to be 3x minus 1 plus 3x minus 1 equals 16. That's our strategy. So combine like terms. So 3x plus 3x is 6x. Minus 1 and minus 1 is a minus 2. And that equals 16. So we're going to add 2 to both sides. Add 2 to both sides. I get 6x equals 18. Divide each side by 6 and I get x equals 3. All right, let's look at number 6. Six. We've got the measure of angle C D B is six Y. C D B is that angle right there. This angle measure is six Y. And we have the angle measure of A C B 
A, C, B, this angle measure right here, that is 2y plus 10. All right, so remember we've got consecutive angles here. Consecutive angle D and consecutive angle C, they are supplementary. So the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle C is 180 degrees. Well now, we've got these diagonals of this, of this rhombus is bisecting those angles. And so this measure was 6y. Well, if this is bisecting, this side is also 6y. So the measure of angle D is going to be 6y plus 6y. And the measure of angle C, the same thing's going on here, is that this diagonal is, is bisecting these two angles. So if that's 2y plus 10, this one is 2y plus 10. So 2y plus 10 plus 2y plus 10 is 4y plus 20. And so that is equal to 180. That's my strategy. So 6y plus 6y is 12y plus 4y is 16y. So 16y plus 20 equals 180. So subtract 20 from both sides. And I get 16y equals 160. Divide by 16 and you get y is equal to 10. That is what y equals, and that's what we're trying to find. y is equal to 10. Number seven. Number seven. Now we're going to talk about a side length. Side length AD is 2x plus 4. And then we have side length CD here. And that measure is 4x minus 4. Now we're talking about these lengths of the sides. These lengths of the sides. And in a parallelogram, well, particularly in a rhombus, these sides are all congruent. And if you know these two things are equal to each other, that's your strategy. So I know that AD is congruent to CD. To plug in what you know, well, AD is 2x plus 4. CD is equal to 4x minus 4. So let's solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 2x, subtract 2x. So I get 4 equals 2x minus 4. And so I'm going to add 4 add 4, and I get 8 is equal to 2x. So divide this by 2, divide this by 2, and so we get x equals 4. And that's what we needed to find, x. Okay, let's talk about properties of squares. Well, properties of squares is going to include all the properties of parallelograms where opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary. That means they add up to 180 degrees and that the diagonals bisect each other. Well, with squares, we also have to consider all the properties of a rectangle. And that includes there are four right angles and that the diagonals are congruent. So we have four right angles in a square. Okay? And then we have to consider all the properties in a rhombi. So a square is not only a rectangle and a parallelogram, it is also a rhombus. So all four sides are congruent. So we show that with these tick marks. All the diagonals are congruent. All the diagonals are perpendicular. 
and each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. So let's draw in our diagonals. So if I do that, drawing in my diagonals here, it's stating here that these diagonals bisect the pair of opposite angles. So the definition of a square here is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles. The test for the square if a quadrilateral is both a rectangle and rhombus then it's a square. So a square is both a rectangle and a rhombus. So let's do some examples here. The diagonals of the square math intersect at point S. So here we've got our point S. Use the given information to measure, find each measure or value. So I'm stating here that the measure of angle A ST equals 5X plus 5. A S T. Well, what is my angle measure of these diagonals? Remember, this is a, these are perpendicular lines, and perpendicular lines form four right angles, and a right angle measures 90 degrees. So if this, right here, this angle measure is 5x plus 5, and I know that angle measure is 90, that is my strategy. So 5x plus 5 equals 90, solve for x. Subtract 5, subtract 5, I get 5x equals 85, divide by 5, and what is that? Is that 17? x equals 17. That is the value of x. For the next one, so we've got the measure of angle H, A, M, this angle measure right here. And that angle measure here is 5x, 5x. So we talked about this before. This, this diagonal bisects that right angle, that 90 degree angle. So if this bisects it, you got to take 90 and divide it by 2, and that is what this 5x is equal to. Well, 90 divided by 2 well, that's 45. So we have 45 equals 5x. And when we divide by 5, we get x equals 9. That's my answer. Next one. So let's think about this next one. So if we've got mh, this length here, that is equal to 8. And they want us to find the length A, H. A, H is that length right there. Okay, well, that's the hypotenuse of this right triangle because we got a right triangle here. This is a 90 degree angle here. So if I rewrite this, if I redraw this figure, I've got 8 here, I've got a right angle. And this is my AH. And because these are all congruent sides here, this is also 8. So these two legs are 8. Well, what we're trying to find is this hypotenuse is C. And to do that, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Or you could also use your special 45, 45, 90 triangle. So if I plug this in, 8 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. So 8 squared is 64. So 64 plus 64 is my C squared. That's 128. So C squared equals 128. 
Take the square root of both sides. I know that this is going to be the square root of 64 times 2. Square root of 64 is 8, so this is going to be 8 square root 2. That's my answer. <coughs> Number 9. Here it's asking, determine whether the parallelogram JKL with vertices negative 7, negative 2, negative 7, negative 2, there's J, right there, J, and K, 0, 4, 0, 4, there's K, and L, 9, 2, and M, 2, negative 4, determine if it is a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square. All right. So to find whether this is a rectangle, we'd have to do congruent diagonals, which is the distance formula. So let's draw our diagonals here. So remember, a diagonal connects non-consecutive sides. There's our first one, and we do that with distance formula. So, J, L. So distance formula is going to be <coughs> J and L. So it's going to be a negative, negative 7, subtract 9, squared plus a negative 2 subtract 2 squared take the square root so negative 7 subtract 9 that is a negative 16 squared negative 2 subtract 2 that's a negative 4 squared all right so 16 squared Negative 16 squared, 256. Negative times negative is a positive. Negative 4 squared is 16. So the square root of 256 plus 16 is going to be the square root of 272. Well, so we've got to figure out our perfect squares. Well, I, I know that 4 divides this. 4 divides this by 68. I think 16 divides this. 16 divides this uh, by 17. So 16 times 17 equals 272. So the square root of 16 is 4. And so that simplifies to 4 square root 2. So let's figure out KM, the distance KM. And so KM is going to be this one. And so let's do that. So 0 subtract 2 plus 4 subtract a negative 4. Well, I can already see this isn't a rectangle because um, this is going to be squared. It's going to be negative 2 squared plus 8 squared. And so this is going to be 4 plus 64, and that's going to equal the square root of 68. So this is not a rectangle. All right? Now we're going to determine whether this is a round. Well, to be a square, the, the diagonals also have to be congruent. So this can't be a square either. So it's not a rectangle. It's not a square. To determine whether it's a rhombus. Well, to figure out if it's a rhombus, we have to find whether the slope of these diagonal lines, whether the slope here <coughs> is, a, is perpendicular. Okay, so let's do this. Let's draw a diagonal between the non consecutive sides here. And if this 
is a, a, a right angle, then we have perpendicular lines. And if this is perpendicular, our, our, if our diagonals are perpendicular, then we have a rhombus. So let's, let's, let's get rid of this stuff. We already figured this out, that this is not a rectangle, this is not a square. So let's figure out what the slope of these lines are to determine whether this, what we have on the coordinate system, whether it's a rhombus. So let's do slope. We can just count boxes here. We can just count boxes here. So we're going down. We're going down and we're going over two. So we're going down two, four, six, eight. So that is a negative eight over two, which is going to be negative four. Now, for this to be perpendicular, we got to do the negative inverse. So the negative inverse is we're going to flip this, put it over one and make it positive. So if the slope of this other line is one fourth, then we've got perpendicular diagonals and we got therefore a rhombus. So let's figure out the slope. So let's look, I'm going to count over two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. That's 16 right there. And it's up one, two. So that's four. So we go four up, 16 over. Well, that reduces by four. That is one fourth. So our slope is one fourth. We have perpendicular lines. So we know that this is the shape. Um, parallelogram J K L. We know that this is a rhombus because we have slopes that are inverse reciprocals, and therefore these are perpendicular lines, and perpendicular diagonals is one of the properties that we talk about for a rhombus. That the diagonals are perpendicular right here. That's one of our properties. All right.